Christopher Nolan is well known today for making complicated films, from the non-linear plot of Dunkirk to the dream within a dream concept in Inception. But in Tenet he faced a new problem, how to make an international spy thriller with inversion. In today's video there will be minor spoilers ahead, so if you haven't seen Tenet, I'd recommend you watch it first, and then a couple more times just to understand the plot. The first scene we're going to talk about is the prologue of the film, which is the first time we see inversion as a concept. This occurs near the end of the prologue, when we see the protagonist, played by John David Washington, see a bullet shot in reverse by a mysterious gunman. Now on first glance, this may seem like a relatively easy shot to obtain, for example by using CGI, especially when you consider how photorealistic CGI can be today. But if you know Christopher Nolan, you know that he likes to do things practically, and Tenet only has around 300 VFX shots which in comparison to a film like Avengers Infinity War, which has nearly 3000 VFX shots, is really small. So in order to create the illusion of an inverted bullet, the filmmakers conducted various tests using practical squibs and then reversing the footage. And for this particular scene, VFX supervisor Scott Fisher used a smoke machine to create a wisp of smoke fed through the bullet hole, and then used a vacuum pump to suck the smoke back in, simulating the bullet shooting in reverse. The next scene we have is the plane crash scene, which, as a lot of you watching know, was filmed using a real Boeing 747 plane. Initially, Nolan planned to use miniatures to film the crash, similar to how in The Dark Knight, a miniature tumbler was used to film the vehicle crashing into a garbage truck, as this couldn't be filmed on location due to Chicago city restrictions. However, the filmmakers realised that using a real jumbo jet wouldn't be too expensive, as there were numerous 747s sitting in scrapyards, which could be bought for around $100,000, which, in the context of a $200 million budget movie, is relatively cheap. And as the scrapyard the plane was bought from also functioned as an airport, the plane didn't even have to be moved in order to film the scene, meaning that in the end, crashing a real 747 into a building was the most practical way to film the scene. Next up, we have the hallway fight scene. Now this seems like something that wouldn't be as difficult to film, especially when you consider the fact that Christopher Nolan has filmed a hallway fight scene before in Inception. But actually, because this scene is shown twice in the film, once when the protagonist is moving in a forwards timeline, and once when the protagonist is inverted, the scene had to be filmed in four different ways. In the forwards timeline filmed forwards, in the forwards timeline but filmed reverse, in the inverted timeline filmed forwards, and in the inverted timeline but filmed reverse. Which makes what seemed like a simple fight scene actually be incredibly difficult to film, because not only did the filmmakers have to film in four different ways, but the actors also had to learn how to fight in a forwards way and in an inverted way. Next up we have the highway chase scene, again something that Nolan has a lot of experience with. But as we've seen before, the inversion mechanics of the film make things a little more complicated. This is another scene that occurs twice in the film, once in the forwards timeline and once in the inverted timeline, meaning that the filmmakers again had to film in four different ways in order to capture the necessary footage. But the difficult thing about this scene is that it required cars to be inverted rather than just humans, and to make this happen practically, the filmmakers again had to innovate. They did this by re-engineering the cars to drive backwards, with the driver hidden in the boot for exterior shots and a driver sitting on top for interior shots. And although the majority of the scene could be filmed practically, CGI had to be used for the car flip. This is because it was a scene that could only be done with one take, and so camera cars that were recording from different angles in both forwards and reverse had to be removed with VFX. And finally we have the climactic battle sequence, which is basically where all hell breaks loose. Or as Ive says, Inverse, conventional, forward antagonist, inverted antagonist, they have it all. This essentially makes it the most difficult scene to film, because rather than filming inverted and forwards timeline separately, all forwards and inverted objects occur simultaneously throughout the whole scene. And to confirm my suspicion that this was the most difficult scene to film, I took to Twitter to ask Christopher Nolan this very question, and this is what he had to say.
Yeah, and there is a lot of action in this film. This next question um, comes from Anna and wants, it talks about the large scale action sequences, including the opera sequence, the 747 crash, the highway scenes, and the final battle. Um, she wants to know which of these was the most difficult to film? Um, they all had the distinct challenges, which actually was great because they weren't, none of them were the same. Right. Uh, but they all had, had huge challenges. I mean, all of it was complicated. I think in some ways, I suppose you'd have to fix on the final battle uh, as the most difficult in a sense, because there was there are so many complexities to it. It, it. We're trying through the film for the audience, we're trying to sort of build a level of understanding and complexity to how this rule set can, how you can have fun with it, essentially. And so every time, you know, we would come up with an idea for an earlier scene that didn't fit, we'd say, okay, well, let's, save that let's let's see if we can explore that in the the final action and uh, so it became this kind of thing that ballooned and got bigger and bigger and bigger uh, over the months of shooting all the other sequences and we we saved it for the end and, and everybody every department got to really pour all their energy into into that sequence so i in some ways i would say that was the most the most challenging a great example of this is the building explosion that occurs halfway through the scene here we see a rocket launcher being used to explode a building in both the forwards and the inverted timeline, resulting in the bottom half of the building reforming and the top half of the building exploding in the forwards timeline, and vice versa for the inverted. This was done using a VFX composition, where an effect is pulled off practically using a miniature in front of a green screen, and then this is combined with other elements on a computer. So each half of the building was filmed exploding in both forwards and reverse from different angles. And then the two halves were put together in post to form what we see on screen. So that's it for the secrets behind the making of Tenet. If you'd like to see a part two of the video to know more about the making of Tenet, or if you have any other suggestions of movies you'd like me to talk about, please be sure to leave a comment down below. And also make sure you like and subscribe as it really does help out the channel. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.